Hello everyone, welcome to your next class. In this one, we're going to give you a very simple decision tree process. So we're gonna create a decision tree uh, and then we're gonna explain how that tree is then generating into a random forest. So we're gonna do a very, very simple example of a decision tree that you can then extrapolate to a larger process that makes sense and that's, you know, a part of machine learning that is very more similar to the linear regression machine learning model uh, by the end of this. So in this class, you're going to learn uh, about how to build a decision tree. We're going to use a very simple example of like sports or playing golf uh, and the weather. Uh, we are going to then show you how to uh, uh, calculate the Gini index in part of that process. You'll understand how that whole thing is working. So we're going to remind you of what that cost function looks like uh, and use this uh, basic example in order to create a very, very simple decision tree that I can then spend a little bit of time uh, talking to you about how we then optimize this process through multiple iterations of creating multiple decision trees to find like the best decision, most accurate decision tree out of all of them. Uh, so you'll remember here that uh, our Gini index, our Gini coefficient uh, 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 function or formula is this cost function for random forests. So G of T here is like the Gini uh, coefficient for a given value or variable, we have one minus the sum of the prob uh, of P, which is probability of a given event uh, of an event given some T variable. And basically all this is saying is like, you know, given the ratio of data of this split, um, how much of uh, the data is split from how much of uh, the data is split between one category and another and if it's equal across both or unequal across both. And I'll, we'll, we'll do an actual calculation of this uh, formula so it actually makes sense and you can look at it. Um, so we're gonna use the example of um, playing a sport outside that is uh, determined by the weather. Golfers, the common one we're talking about random forests is uh, talking about golfing and, and weather with golfing. Usually you don't like to golf in the rain or when it's really windy. So if we were to uh, determine, you know, what are the conditions that, uh, the optimal conditions for a golfer or what is the likelihood that someone will golf given some sort of weather condition, we can collect some data about uh, golfers, either for a specific person or a group of people, uh, about uh, about golfing and, and like the weather information for it. So I've created a very simple representation of this in this graph. You'll see the first column here is that uh, did a person play golf at that point? Uh, it was, was golf played? Yes or no? Uh, and those are the only two variables that you can have for that. You'll see the next column is weather. Was it sunny or rainy? We then record the humidity and whether there was wind or not. So you'll notice here first that uh, three of these four categories are, uh, of these columns are categories, you know, yes, no, sunny, rainy. Um, so you can codify these as numbers, but uh, they're, they're, you know, they're, disc they're a discrete variable, they're not a continuous variable. However, we do have a continuous variable in humidity. So what you see here is that r random forests can use virtually any type of data in order to create their splitting decision. Your 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 outcome, if you wanted to like maybe you could you didn't have to you don't have to have the outcome of playing golf or not uh, being a yes no category. It can actually be a number between zero one or any other kind of number for that matter as like your target decision for decision uh, outcome to be made. So um, it's a really interesting feature of random forest models that make them very robust and usable in all kinds of situations. So um, what I've done here is just give an example of what the data w could look like. I'm then going to show you, and I'm now going to show you a very simple representation of how we would make a split in this data and an example of a decision tree for random forest, and then uh, show you how we can calculate the Gini index for uh, some sample data of this sort. So as you see here, this is like a very simple flow chart. I have Outlook here for like play golf or not, or like what the weather is. Uh, you'll also notice that uh, our first split was on weather. So we had our, our, our variable here, uh, which was, you know, playing golf or not as our, as our final choice, but we first split on weather. And what we uh, see here is that, you know, we only had two types of weather, sunny or rainy. Uh, and then within those categories, we then split uh, sunny across the humidity levels. I just said greater or less than 80. 
and and it, with rainy we split across whether or not it was windy and you'll see for each of these boxes did they play uh, or not play so what we're saying in our first box on the far left here is did they play when it was sunny and the humidity was over 80 and how many times did they play and not play um, when the hum sunny and the humidity was less than 80 and uh, did they play or not play and you can continue to create these uh, decision nodes uh, based on these splits uh, that were from the table that you saw before. We also have it for rainy and windy. So for sunny, you can then split across humidity and see, okay, well, uh, how often did they play or not play when it was windy or not for a greater than 80 or less than 80 and do the same for the other side. Uh, but for this, we just really wanted to have a simple, simple graph so you could see that. The next thing I wanna do is I wanna show you how I calculate a Gini index for one of these play no play boxes at the bottom here and hopefully that'll clear up how that is then used to then optimize our decision tree to find like the best tree for uh, in a random randomly generated in a forest of trees so here we have our uh, our graph that we saw before. The first thing we're gonna do, guys, is we're gonna we're gonna create the Gini index for this set of values here. Uh, so for this decision here. So how we did that? Remember that uh, that formula for before. I'm going to not write it out here. I'm just going to show you how you actually calculate it for these boxes here, okay? So first, remember we had that one minus, so we have one minus, and then what we're going to be doing is we're going to uh, we're going to create two Gini indexes, so I'm going to have it for 80 first. So here's 80. So then one minus, and then we have the sum of all of these uh, possibilities of humidity either being greater than or less than. Uh, 80 and we square that that value. So the first thing is we have our greater than 80. We have um, uh, There are 12 outcomes in total uh, For our greater than 80. So the probability of playing uh, Given this data set is 8 over 12 because we have 12 altogether and of playing we have 8 they played eight times of the 12 times. And then what we do from here is we square that, so that P squared. And then we also have to calculate the likelihood that they didn't play given that it was greater than 80, which is four times. So that is also an important feature here. And we have our P squared for that as well. And that probability value comes out to 0.455. Okay, next we need to calculate um, another probability for the less than 80 and how we do that again is our one minus and we have they played two games and didn't play two games it was two over four each so um, we have that here and the prob this is the probability that played and the probability that they didn't play and that was squared and this gives us a value of uh, 0.5 Right, it's 0.5 minus 0.5. Actually, this should give us zero. Yeah. No, wait. No, no, no. It actually is 0.5, guys, because this is 0.5 times uh, squared, so 0 0.25, 0 0.25. Yeah, that's 0.5 there. That math checks out. So uh, this is creating the ratios, uh, those p values for each of these categories. Now, to calculate the Gini index uh, for this split, how that works, that's g of t. The Gini index will then be um, 0.455 times uh, the total amount of occurrences for uh, both sets of probabilities. So our 0.55 is the greater than 80, so that's 12 over 16. And then we do or, that's how we use why we use the plus operator. That's a, a basic, uh, a fundamental in statistics when doing probability. 0.5 times 4 over 16, which is the amount of um, observations we had for less than 80. And that value equals 0.4653. So our Gini coefficient for this split here in humidity uh, would have been you know, 0.4653 when it was greater than or less than um, 80. That's how the Gini coefficient is calculated 
uh, in a decision tree. And that coefficient is important information that tells us how well, how equitable our split was. Was it able to actually uh, split out a class or a category that we really wanted it to effectively? So uh, how a random forest is created from these different decision trees, guys, is that uh, the the classes, the way that we split our criteria for our data set are, 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 just, are determined in a stepwise fashion. And by summing up all the different Gini coefficients that are, are built from all of the different decision nodes, uh, you can find the most optimal decision tree from all of the trees that you've created. And that's why it's called a random forest. You randomly generate a set of decision trees and like the tallest tree or the the most effective tree based off of your Gini index cost function uh, is what will determine how accurate your random forest is uh, and find like the, the most optimal tree that you can then uh, you know, send data through and try and have it accurately classify some outcome for you. Uh, so in the next class, we're gonna show you a little bit more code about how that works though. Okay guys, so with that, we talked about the process of building a, a decision tree and how that eventually create a, becomes a random forest model. I showed you uh, a very simple example of creating a decision tree using golf as an example and how to uh, calculate the Gini coefficient uh, for a decision node and what that actually means when you uh, look at that graph later uh, from, the, from the earlier class. So in our next section, we're gonna start to play around with uh, creating a random forest code. So in our next coding section, we're gonna create that graph from, our, from the previous uh, lecture uh, using the iris data set. And then in the subsequent coding chapter, we're gonna show you how to calculate a really unique and interesting feature of random forests, which are, you can actually determine how important a feature is in, uh, in, its, uh, in its classification, which is not something that is common in all machine learning models. It's something that makes uh, random forests actually unique and, and awesome. So uh, with that guys, thank you very much and see you in the coding section.